Good evening. How are you all doing? Are you all fine? Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, may you please have mercy upon me. And may you have mercy upon these people who are seated before me. I pray that every demon may be bound in Jesus' name and that you may be glorified this evening. We thank you, Father, for what you will do in this place today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The title of today's message is Escape for Your Life. Escape for Your Life. I was actually struggling on how, what title should I give to this message. And finally, I decided to entitle it, Escape for Your Life. If you have your Bibles, or better yet, let me say, get your Bibles, and come with me to Luke chapter 17. We're going to read a couple of verses, and from these verses, we're going to go to Genesis, and then we'll go to Leviticus. We'll just look at a couple of verses. The title of the message is Escape for your life. Before I proceed, this evening we are going to take a flight for about 30 minutes, I hope, 30 minutes. This place will be the body of the plane. Our pilot is the Holy Spirit, known as the guide. Our fuel is faith. The control tower is God. I'm just the voice on the plane. You can forget about me. I'm not important. But you have to remember the words that will proceed from my mouth. And our destination is at Jesus' feet. And we are going to fly at a very high altitude. And so I, I plead with you to put your cell phones on flight mode so that we don't experience any turbulence. So if your cell phones are still on, please put them on flight mode. We don't want to experience any turbulence. You have five seconds to do that. Five seconds to put your cell phones on flight mode. Luke chapter 17. And I invite you to come with me to verse 20. Luke chapter 17 verse 20. The Bible says, Now when he, this is Jesus, was asked by the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God would what? Would what? When the kingdom of God would come. He answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with what? Observation. So they want to know when will the kingdom of God come. Give us some hints. What will happen? Give us a date. When will Jesus come? What's going to happen before he comes? Verse 21. Jesus says, Nor will they say, See here or see there. For indeed the kingdom of God is within you. I'll explain that. Verse 22. Then he said to the disciples, The days will come when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. Jesus was saying, A day will come that you will desire to see me, but you will not see me, because he was going to lay his life, and he was going to go to heaven. Verse 23. And they will say to you, Look here. Or look there, do not go after them or follow them. So they asked Jesus, what are the signs to the second coming? What's going to happen before you come? Jesus tell, tells them that if someone comes to you and tells you, look, he's there. Or look, he's in Mindanao. Or he's in Davao. Jesus says, do not believe. Look at verse 24. Jesus says this. For as the lightning that flashes out of one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in his day. Jesus is saying, when I come, it will not be in secret. I will not first appear in Mindanao, or a week after that I'll appear in Cebu. When I come, not only the whole Philippines, but the whole world will see me. Those who lived blind, who could not see, on that day, they will see Jesus Christ. Every 
person will see him. And so Jesus tells them, if someone tells you that Jesus has already come, he's in that place, he's in that place, come to this place, he's there. Jesus says, do not believe. That's the first thing he tells them. Now come with me to verse 25. But first, he was referring to himself, he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. Jesus says, before that day, he was still on earth back then, he says, I will be rejected and I will suffer. I will lay my life, I will resurrect, I will ascend into heaven, and I will come again. Verse 26, Jesus says, and as it was in the days of who? In the days of who? Noah. Noah. So it will be also in the days of the son of what? Of man. Jesus says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the day when the son of man shall what? Shall come. My dear friends, I want to invite you to Genesis chapter 6. It is very important for us to know what was happening in the days of Noah. Genesis chapter 6, and I want you to come with me to verse 5. The Bible says this, Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil. What? Continually. Verse 8, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So in the days of Noah, people's thoughts were evil. People did evil. People talked evil. People did not care about God. And Jesus says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be on the day of the Son of Man. Now, I want you to look at verse 11. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with what? With violence. Verse 12. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was what? Cor- corrupt. For all flesh, can you imagine? All flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. Now, you know what happened. God told Noah to build a what? To build an ark. And God told Noah to preach. You have 120 years. You must preach and warn people that I will destroy the world with a flood. And every person who wants to be saved must do what? Must enter the ark. The same thing that happened in Noah's days is the same thing that happens today. My dear friends, Jesus is coming soon. And many people do not believe There are people who have been hearing this for a long time. But today they have not given their lives to Christ. Noah was being mocked. They were saying you're crazy. How can there be a flood that the whole world will be flooded? How can that happen? Are you crazy? People were making fun of him. People did not believe in him. When he was talking, people ignored him. The same thing happens today in church. When a preacher speaks, instead of people listening to the message, people are texting. People are talking to one another. People have no interest to listen to the word of God. And this is very important. And if you continue to read, I want you to come with me now in verse 22. Genesis chapter 6 verse 22. The Bible says this. Thus Noah did... According to all that God what? Commanded him, so he did. God told him, preach and tell people to repent and to enter the ark. And he did just that. And he built the ark. But there was something else that God told him. I want you to come with me to chapter 7 and look at verse 2. Verse 2, the Bible says, You shall take with you seven of each clean animal. Male and his what? Female. Two of each animals that are unclean. A male and his what? Female. If you have noticed, in verse 2, God emphasizes that it must be male and what? Female. This is very interesting. Come with me to verse 3. The Bible says this. Also seven each of birds of the air. Male and what? Female. 
Why is God saying this? Verse 3 says, to keep the species alive on the face of all the what? The earth. So God has said, I'm going to destroy the world with a flood, but you must command or the animals must come in the ark, male and what? Female. Verse 3 says, to keep the species alive. Come with me to verse 9. Verse 9 says, two by two, they went into the ark to Noah, what? Male and what? Female, as God had commanded who? Noah. So God gave strict orders to Noah. A strict commandment. It must be male and female in the ark. I have a good question for you this evening. Let us suppose that Noah said, I will disobey the Lord and I will only allow male animals in the ark. What would have happened? Now, the Bible says, male and female of all species, animals and humans. Suppose Noah said, I will only let my daughters enter the ark. No males in the ark. I will disobey God. What do you think would have happened? What do you think would have happened? Well, I guarantee you this evening we would not be here today. We would not be here today. If Noah had disobeyed God, we would not have been here today. Come back to Luke 17. I'll repeat verse 26. And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. So people did not care about God. When they heard the gospel, they ignored the gospel. And the flood came. Those who entered the ark were saved. And those who did not enter, what happened? They perished. And the Bible says when God shut the door of the ark and they noticed that it was raining and that Noah was not lying, they went to knock and asked Noah to open the door. But the door was shut and it could not be opened anymore. So in other words, Jesus is saying this. In the last days, there will be many people who will hear the gospel. They will deny, they will reject Jesus, and when Jesus closes the door of probation, it will be too late. There are many people today who will hear the gospel. They will reject it. And by the time Jesus comes, it will be too late. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be today. Come with me to verse 27. The Bible says this. They ate. This is Luke 17, verse 27. They ate. They drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed who? Them all. Now, in this verse, Jesus is not saying that we should not eat and that we should not get married. We can do those things. In fact, we have to. But those things must not be the only things we do. What they have done is, they have forgotten about Jesus. They, were, they only cared about eating. They only cared about other things of lives. They only cared about getting money, making money, and finding pleasure for themselves. And they forgot about Jesus. That is what Jesus is rebuking in this text. Verse 28, Jesus says, Likewise, as it was also in the days of who? Of who? Of Lot. They ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. Now, again I repeat, there is nothing wrong with what? With eating, with drinking, with buying, with selling, and with planting, and with building. But if you are doing those things, and those are the only things you invest your time in, it is wrong. Jesus Christ should be our goal. All of these things will pass away. The only thing that is eternal is what Jesus is trying to impart in us, and that is his character. We should be focusing on receiving a Christ-like character, and that is received through daily reading of the Bible and praying daily. And so in verse 28, Jesus says, as it was in the days of Lot, 
so shall it be before the what? Verse 29. But on the day that Lot went out of where? Sodom. It rained fire and what? Brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. What was going on in the days of Lot? The Bible says that Lot was a righteous man. He was a good man. He was living in a land that was evil, it was corrupt, it was bad. And its sin had reached up to heaven. And God decided to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, there were angels who were sent there to rescue Lot. Let me tell you this, that God will never abandon his children. The world will be destroyed. But before God destroys the world, God will send angels to seal his bond servants and they will be protected. He will not allow those who follow him, those who seek him daily, not only on Wednesdays, not only on Fridays, not only on Saturdays, but those who seek Christ daily, he will not allow them to suffer the plagues that are coming to destroy the world. As it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, so shall it be on the days that the Son of Man will come. So these angels went there, and they resided in the, in the city. And Lot went out and found them in the city, and he invited them to come to his house. They insisted and said, no, we will not go in, we will sleep here. But Lot insisted and insisted until they came to his house. You know what happened. When they were there, the Bible says that the men of the city came to Lot's house and they knocked on the door and they told Lot, give us these men so that we can do what? So that we can sleep with them. Give us these men so that we can sleep with them. Lot said, no, don't do such an evil thing. Let me give you my virgin daughters. They said, no, we don't want your virgin daughters. We want to sleep with those men. We want the men, we don't want the ladies. And so, what happened is, just before they broke in, the angels blindfolded them, and you know what, not blindfolded them, they became blind. And the angels grabbed Lot, his, fab, his wife and the daughters, and took them out of the city, because it was going to be destroyed. Now, I want you to come with me, to verse 31. Verse 31. It, Jesus says, In that day, he who is, who is on the housetop and his goods are in the house, let him not come down to take them what? Away. And likewise, the one who is in the field, let him not do what? Let him not turn back. Verse 32. Very short verse. Jesus says, remember Lot's what? Wife. Before Jesus says, remember Lot's wife, Jesus says this. On that day, when you are supposed to flee from the city, do not look back. If you have left something in the city, do not go back. And after Jesus says that, Jesus says, remember Lot's wife. Do you know what Lot's wife did? When they were leaving the city... The angel told them, do not look back. She turned around and looked back and she was turned into a pillar of stone. Or was it salt? Salt. And she died because she looked back. And she looked back because there were things in the city she could not let go. Sodom and Gomorrah was a rich city. Those twin cities were very wealthy. People were very rich. And there were certain things in the city she could not let go. And Jesus says, as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be in the last days before he comes. There are many people who will not go to heaven just because of money. Just because of gold. Just because of material things. Can you imagine you're about to enter into the kingdom of heaven and Jesus tells you, I'm sorry, you cannot enter. Why? Because you loved money more than your salvation. To miss the kingdom of heaven because of something that will pass away. 
And Jesus says, remember Lot's wife, do not commit the same mistake that she committed. Now, come with me to verse 33. Jesus says, whoever seeks to save his life will what? Will lose it. And whoever loses his life will what? Preserve it. I tell you, in that night there will be two men in one bed. The one will be taken and the other will be what? Left. Two women will be grinding together. The one will be taken and the other left. Some people have misinterpreted this text. And they say that there will be a secret rapture. That here in Mulave, he will be taken to heaven. And then someone else in Mulave, B and C, will be taken and some will be left. It will be in secret, they, they, they say. But if you remember, same chapter, Luke 17, verse 24, the Bible says, For as the lightning that flashes out of one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in his day. When Jesus comes, every person will see him. Nobody will be taken to heaven in secret. There will be no secret rapture. Every eyes will behold him. The dead will resurrect. Every person will see Jesus Christ coming again. The title of the sermon is Flee for Your Lives. Escape for Your Lives. On Friday, I'm not sure if you're aware... But in the states, they have legalized same-sex marriage. In every state, it is legalized. Jesus says, as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be. In the days of Lot, same-sex marriage was also legal. And today, it is also legal. My dear friends, Jesus Christ is coming soon. Jesus said... A long time ago, as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be before I come. And it is happening. I want to share a couple of verses before I close. I invite you to the book of Leviticus. Come with me to Leviticus. Let us look at verse... verse let us go to verse... Verse 16. Come with me to verse 16. I need to find the verse there that I'm looking for. Um, come with me to verse 22. This is God speaking here. Before I read verse 22, come to verse 1. Verse 1. Leviticus 18 verse 1. Then the Lord spoke to Moses. Who spoke to Moses? So this is not coming from Moses, is it? It's coming from who? From the Lord. Verse 2, speak to the children of Israel and say to them, I am the Lord your what? Your God. Verse 3, according to the doings of the land of Egypt, where you dwelt, you shall not do. And according to the doings of the land of Canaan, where I am bringing you, you shall not do, nor shall you walk in their ordinances. God is saying, Moses, tell the Israelites, that whatever they saw in Egypt, they must not practice in Canaan. And whatever they will see in Canaan, they must not practice. You know what was one of those things that they saw in Egypt and they saw in Canaan? There are many things. We don't have time to look at them, but I'll show you one. Verse 22. Jesus says this. God says this. You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. In other words, Jesus is saying that a man must not sleep with another man as though he's sleeping with a woman. It is a what? An abomination. One more other thing, another thing, verse 23. Nor shall you mate, it means you must not have sex, with any animal to defile yourself with it, nor shall any woman stand before an animal to mate with it. It is a perversion. In those days, there were people sleeping with animals. And my dear friends, even today, there are people who sleep with animals. One more thing. Why? Verse 24. God says this. Do not defile yourselves with any of these things. 
For by all these, the nations are what? Defiled, which I am casting out before you. God says, the nations that I am destroying, I am destroying them because they have done this. They have approved same-sex marriage. They have been having sleeping with animals. And they have defiled the land. So I am destroying them through you. Do not do this or else you will also be destroyed. The title of the sermon is Escape for Your Lives. My dear friends, destruction is coming. Jesus is going to destroy this world as he destroyed the world in the times of Noah with the flood, as he burned Sodom and Gomorrah, Jesus very soon will come again and he will destroy this world. But before he does that, the, the servants of God, the Christians, those who are faithful to his commandments, they will be sealed by God and they will not be destroyed. Second to the last verse, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is the first, the, no, the fifth book of the Bible. Deuteronomy is 22. 22. 22, verse 5. Look at what God says. A woman, a woman shall not wear anything that pertaineth to a what? To a man. It means that a woman must not wear a man's clothes. Look, look what else it says. Nor shall a man put on a woman's garment. A man must not also wear a woman's clothes. For all who do so are an abomination to the Lord your God. These things are not new. They were happening before. And God warned us not to do these things. The last verse I will share with you is in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Many people misunderstand 1 Corinthians chapter 6, but by the grace of God, this evening, you will leave this place knowing the truth about this verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, we will read from verse 8 to verse 11, and then we will close. Verse 8, No, you yourselves do wrong and cheat. And you do these things to your what? To your brethren. Verse 29. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of what? The kingdom of what? We began in the book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 20. The Bible says the Pharisees went to Jesus and they asked him what will be the signs before the kingdom of God, what? Comes. Now here, Paul says, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of what? Of God. The unrighteous will not. He says, do not be what? Deceived. You know why Paul says this? Because in the last days, before Jesus comes, Paul knows that many will be deceived that you can be unrighteous and still inherit the kingdom of God. Of God. I'm going to repeat this verse. If you have your Bibles, read with me. Verse 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. In other words, don't let anyone tell you that any unrighteous person will inherit the kingdom of God. The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. And he goes on to say, neither, now he goes on to mention, neither what? Neither what? fornicators nor idolaters you know what idolaters are huh people who worship idols people who pray to statues and bow down to statues an idol is not only something uh, you build and you bow down to money can be an idol self can be an idol anything that receives more attention in your life than God becomes your idol your girlfriend can be your idol your studies can be your idol Sports can be your idol. If you love basketball, tennis, or soccer more than Jesus, if you invest more on those things, then you invest on your spiritual life. You are an idolater. And he goes on to say, nor adulterers, those who commit adultery. And he says, nor 
homosexuals. The Greek for it is nor effeminate, nor sodomites will inherit the kingdom of heaven. This is in verse 9. He says, nor sodomites will inherit the kingdom of heaven. Verse 10, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor drunkards will inherit the kingdom of heaven. There are some churches today where they say you can drink. One cup a day won't do you wrong. Here, the apostle Paul says, huh? the apostle Paul says that nor drunkards will inherit the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because our body is the temple of God and alcohol is bad for the body. Very simple. Nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Now, usually, when people read this text and when people share this text, they only emphasize one sin that is mentioned here, and that's homosexuality. My dear friends, even if you are proud, it is still a sin. He mentions drunkards, he mentions adulterers, he mentions idolaters, he mentions fornicators, he mentions homosexuals. He, does only say, he doesn't only say that homosexuals will not inherit the kingdom of heaven, but even those who are proud, even those who are self-centered, even those who cheat and lie and steal, even those who gossip, even those who, who know they should dress right, but they still dress immodestly, even those who are worldly, worldly-minded, those who follow worldly things, they listen to worldly music, watch worldly movies, they also will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. But the good news, if you continue to read, is in verse 11, the last verse we'll read. And Paul says this, And such were some of you. Such were, that's past. And such were some of you. But you were past. You were washed, but you were past. You were sanctified, but you were past. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Amen. And praise the Lord for this verse. What Paul is saying is this. When he was in Corinth, there were people there who were drunkards. They were adulterers. They were homosexuals there. They were there were many people there who were living a sinful life. And in verse 11 he says, And such were some of you. Meaning, you are no longer like that. You have been changed and transformed. He says, but you were washed. Your sins were forgiven. He says, but you were sanctified. But you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Holy Spirit of our Lord. Meaning, when he went there... He preached the gospel to them as Noah did. But these people repented. The drunkards stopped drinking. The idolaters stopped worshipping idols. The homosexuals became straight. You know what else? Some people say that they are born like that. That's not true. Because according to this text, Jesus changed some of them and they became straight. And if they are like that, they will not go to heaven, according to the Bible, not according to me. As I said in the beginning, you can forget about me, but remember the word of God. I'm not important. According to God's word, they will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Now, if we say God created them like that, we are saying that God created them to go to where? To go to hell. Why will God create them like that so that they can go to hell? God is not that type of God. It is not God who does this. This is the result of sin. But Jesus Christ is the antidote to sin. It is through Jesus Christ that we can be saved and only through Jesus Christ. I will share a couple of quotations by Ellen White. This is found in Patriots and Prophet, chapter 14. You can find these things from page 166, paragraph 1, until page 167, 
paragraph 1. I will just take some things. She comments on Luke 17, what we have just studied. And this is what she says. There is cause for alarm in the condition of the religious world today. God's mercy has been trifled with. In other words, people are abusing God's mercy. Oh, it's okay. God will forgive me anyways. I can, I can just watch a little pornography. As long as I pray afterwards and go to church, I'll be fine with God. I can go to Paseo and uh, drink blue horse, pink horse, red horse. And when I come in PIC, Jesus will forgive me. It's fine. She says people are trifling with God's mercy. They are abusing God's mercy. She says this, the multitudes make the void law of Jehovah teachings for doctrines, the commandments of man. Meaning they are abandoning God's commandments and they are teaching man's commandments. God has ten commandments and we must still follow them today. I wish I had time to tell you about the ten commandments. It has not been abolished. In fact, you find it in the New Testament. Okay, I'll just give you one. Luke chapter 4 verse 16 says about Jesus, he went to Nazareth as he, where he had been brought up and as it was his custom, he entered the church where? He entered the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up for to read. It was Jesus' custom to go to church on the Sabbath. Every Sabbath, when Jesus was on earth, he went to church. One more text. Acts 17 verse 2, talking about Paul, says the same thing. It says that it was Paul's custom to go to church on the Sabbath. And he taught people on the Sabbath. Paul became a Christian after Jesus resurrected and Jesus went to where? To heaven. When Jesus appeared to Paul, Jesus was already where? In heaven. It was after Jesus' death and resurrection that Paul was converted. And Paul was keeping the Sabbath, and it was Jesus who called Paul into the ministry. Some people say that when Jesus died on the cross, Jesus abolished the Ten Commandments. Why is it that Paul still keeps the Ten Commandments after Jesus' resurrection, and it was Jesus who called him? My dear friends, Jesus has not abolished the Ten Commandments. Jesus abolished the ceremonial law, which pointed to Jesus as a sacrifice. That is the law that was abolished, not the Ten Commandments. But that's another sermon. Now let's finish this. She goes on to say, Infidelity prevails in many of the churches in our land. Not infidelity in its broadest sense. An open denial of the Bible. But an infidelity that is rubbed in the garb of Christianity. While it is undermining faith in the Bible as a revelation from God. She says this, The world is fast becoming ripe for destruction. Soon, the judgments of God are to be poured out, and sin and sinners are to be consumed. Said our Savior, she's quoting Luke 21, 34 to and 36, Jesus says, take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your heart be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of life, and so that day come upon you unawares. She goes on to say, before the destruction of Sodom, remember Jesus says as it was in the days of Lot, right? She says this, before the destruction of Sodom, God sent a message to Lot. And the message was, escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. She says this, so it was in the days of Noah, as with Lot, so with the disciples prior to the destruction of Jerusalem. And so it will be in the last days. Again, the voice of God is heard in a message of warning, bidding his people separate themselves from the prevailing iniquity. The last quotation I'll share. A verse, Matthew, 20, Matthew chapter 6, 
Verse 24. As in the days of Noah and Lot, there must be a marked separation from sin. And sinners, there can be no compromise between God and the world. No turning back to secure earthly treasures. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God and money. We must choose today what we will follow. Will we follow what America says or will we follow what God says? We will follow what preachers are saying or will we follow what the preacher of preachers, Jesus Christ, has said? Today, we must choose who will we follow. Jesus is coming soon. I am very excited because I am going to heaven. But at the same time, I am worried for those who have not accepted Jesus as their personal savior. This is not the first time you have heard the gospel. This is not the first time you have been warned. Do not make the mistake the people made in Noah's time. Do not make the mistake people made in Lot's time. As Noah preached, they ignored him. And today the same thing happens. You know, some people when they are listening to the sermon, they cannot wait until the preacher says, finally, let us bow and pray our eyes. And let us bow our heads and close our eyes. People are listening, but they cannot wait until the preacher says, let us close. Some go to church, they're listening to the sermon, but they cannot wait until it ends so they can go for potluck. My dear friends, your life is at stake. Jesus is coming again. And Jesus is coming very, very, very close. Escape for your lives. Escape to the arms of Jesus Christ and accept him before it is too late. This evening, I want to invite you to bow your heads. Every person in this room. I want to invite you to bow your heads and close your eyes. I will offer a prayer. God has spoken. You have been convicted. If your eyes are still open, please close your eyes and bow your heads. If you have not given your life to Jesus yet, my dear friends, do not delay for your salvation. Do not hesitate to be saved. Why must you reject to be saved? It does not matter what people will say to you. In heaven, we will go one by one. Salvation is not by group or by dorm or by family. Salvation is individual. My dear friends, decide to have a closer walk with Jesus Christ today, not tomorrow. We have no time. And as I pray, I want to invite you to also pray. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for your presence in this room. Thank you for the angels in this room. Thank you for the Holy Spirit and thank you for the conviction that you have brought in this room. Thank you for disturbing us and stirring our hearts. Father in heaven, please forgive the sins we have committed against you. In thoughts and in action, intentionally and unintentionally, please be merciful towards us and set us free from self. Some of us have been lying, gossiping. We have been entertaining ourselves with worldly things. From pornography to many other evil things, Father. We have been living a sinful life. And this evening, in Jesus' name, we come before you to be cleansed and washed. Father, give us your Holy Spirit. And prepare us for your second coming. I pray for any person in this room who has not surrendered their lives to Jesus. Even through baptism. I pray, Father, that you may convict them and that you may disturb them. So that they can accept you before you close that door and it is too late. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
God bless you.